everyone. So I just discovered that um, I can only upload videos less than 15 minutes. So it takes a little bit of trimming and the previous video might be a little bit jumpy um, because of trimming and things like that. But um, it should be smooth sailing from here on out. Um, I'll just keep the videos a bit shorter than 15. Okay, so we went through our three different kinds of perspective, one point, two point, and three point in the previous videos. I suggest you do those activities and actually try and draw each one. It'll just help cement the concepts a bit better. Okay, so one point perspective. Here we've got some examples where we've got it disappearing into the distance. So we've got one point there where our road is converging. And we've got the corridor that goes to that one point and again another street here that goes to that one point so you can see all the buildings and everything that's around actually goes towards that one point okay two point perspective so remember i said it's the corner of the box or the corner of the building so we've got the vanishing points on the left and the right okay so one there and one there that we've got it disappearing to so corners of the fence here corner of the building even and then it is vanishing in each point each side there's even written vp vanishing point three point perspective is either looking from below the building or above it so here we've got the one point two point will be just off the screen here to the left and three points at the top there. So you can see our three different points where things are vanishing to. Okay, so now you're going to do activity 1.7 on page 23 of your textbook. So either in your sketchbook or on a piece of paper, you can collect different pieces of shoes from magazines or print them off the internet um, and make them different sizes. So what you're going to do is you're gonna now try and place them into a landscape picture that is going to show depth so things like you're going to start with your smaller shoes first paste your smaller shoes into the background and then paste the bigger shoes or medium-sized shoes in the midground and the biggest shoes are going to be pasted at the front so using that sizing you're going to create that depth in your picture and then you can also use things like paint to make the shoes in the background slightly lighter um, and use ballpoint pens and things like that to draw into the shoes at the front to make them bigger and make them stand out more. Right, so go ahead and do activity 1.7 now. Once we've done that activity, we're going to move on to our principles of design. So the elements of art are the building blocks or the bricks that actually build the walls of the house of art. And then the principles of design is how I'm going to put my rooms together and make things pretty. So using my elements, using those things to actually create things. Like in English, you've got your words, your words will be your elements of art. And then your sentences and your paragraphs that you're actually putting together is your composition. So elements, single building blocks, principles is the arrangement of those building blocks. Um, when we talk about the element, uh, the principles of design, we're going to talk about organizing the elements or creating compositions that are interesting. And those compositions are actually extremely important to the success of your artwork. Whether you've got a balanced composition, a nice, pretty composition that is pleasing to the eye. Okay, so if we look at this image here, we've got Raphael, the engagement of the Virgin from 1504. We are looking at a nice layout. It's very symmetrical. It's very balanced. Um, it's laid out with a background, a mid-ground, and a foreground. Okay, so a very pleasant, balanced, almost mathematical um, layout. A composition can be divided into three planes. So we call the entire picture our picture plane. And that picture plane can be divided into three different sections. The front section here, we've got all our people standing will be our foreground. And usually the foreground is the closest to the viewer. The background here, so we've got the building in the back, that is the furthest from the viewer. And the little piece here in the middle, that square where the other people are standing, 
is our midground and it lies in between the background and the foreground. Okay, so we've got foreground, midground, and background. And if you want to talk about the picture plane, you can talk about the front of the picture plane, the middle of the picture plane, or high up on the picture plane, the back of the picture plane. So in this picture, what do you think would be the focal point? Focal point being the most important part of the picture. And I'll give you another hint. Look at the name of the picture as well. It is called the engagement of the Virgin. So whenever you're stuck, look at the title of the work to actually give you that little bit of extra information that you might need. So the focal point of this image would be the engagement happening here. So the actual putting the ring on the finger. In an artwork, we get different kinds of balance and balance creates stability or instability in a picture. So imagine you've got a scale and you've got things on both sides. We have a symmetrical balance. So both sides are similar and sometimes even mirrored. So symmetrical balance, imagine you've got a scale. It doesn't have to be identical on both sides. If you've got an apple on one side and an orange on the other side, but they weigh more or less the same, your picture can be still symmetrical. Okay, so it's got similar elements on both sides. Asymmetrical, it's different on both sides, so very uneven. And radial, which we don't really get too much, it is when we've got a circle of um, sorts. So things like uh, rose windows or flowers can be radial balance. Imagine in maths, you've got radiuses. Radiuses talk about circles. So radial balance will be circular. Right, so here we've got some examples of symmetrical balance. If we take this picture here of the elephants with the ballet dancers, it is similar on both sides, but not identical. So if we take, for example, the elephants, we've got an elephant on each side balancing it. But it is not identical. If I folded it in half, it wouldn't be exactly the same. Look at the front legs of the elephants. This one has his front legs slightly bent and forward. This one's front legs are together. If we look at the tusks, this one's tusks are more straightforward whereas this one has very skew tusks. So even though it appears symmetrical, we still call it symmetrical balance. It is not identical on both sides. Asymmetrical balance is completely different. So if I draw a line down this side, we've got a nose on that side and nothing there. We've got a wave here and nothing there, empty space. We've got the tree on the left-hand side and the, uh, the right-hand side is empty, it's just sky. Radial balance is my circular balance. So I can draw points of symmetry in the middle, cross, okay, multiple points of symmetry, circles, things like mandalas would fall into this category.